Williams. And for the first time in 1992, that's a Mojo touchdown as John Williams takes it in from five yards out. Friday, September 4th, Rattler Stadium. Tim Hollingshead started his third season as the Panthers head coach, Permian hosting El Paso Coronado. The talk of improvement among El Paso schools fell on deaf ears, or so it seemed, when the Panthers were down 3-0 late in the first half. This Shane Wells 40-yard field goal that bounced across for the first mojo points of the season brought about a halftime tie of 3-3. History does not record what took place in that locker room, but history does show that Permian stormed back with 28 third quarter points. 12 minutes, 5 seconds, 5 possessions, 5 touchdowns. Dennis Graham, his first varsity start, threw for 3 touchdowns, 2 to Kendrick Parrott, 1 to Gerard Bergen. John Williams, his first 100-yard game, 128 to be exact, on 22 carries. The first win was in the books, 38-3. Two of the top teams of the state clashed during the second week of the season. The number one Panthers traveling to Temple to tackle the number three Wildcats. It was a game that lived up to much advanced billing. Permian scoring on this 50-yard John Williams touchdown. Dennis Graham is back to offset to the right side. A long count as Dennis flips it up to John Williams. Williams in the Temple territory at the 40. Williams on his way to the 20. He's at the 10, and that's a mojo touchdown. But before the quarter ended, in fact, 45 seconds before it ended, Temple had tied it up. Temple waited to the last minute of the second quarter to take the 14-7 halftime lead. That lead lasted until Kendrick Parrott brought down this 48-yard pass from Dennis Graham. And we were all tied heading to the final quarter. First and 10 from the 48. Graham looking to throw now, looking deep, has a man. Parrott all alone, catches it. And that's a mojo touchdown. Dennis Graham to Kendrick Parrott. With 8.45 to go in the game, an eight-yard pass play gave Temple the final margin of victory. The extra point was blocked, giving Permian last-second hope. But in the end, the 2014 final ended the Panthers' 18-game unbeaten streak. The standing room only crowd had seen a classic matchup, with Permian holding their heads high at the end. Week three of the season, and a new winning streak was started against a stubborn Amarillo team. Permian took off early with a 19-0 halftime advantage that included this 21-yard pass to Scott Cherry. A 10-yard pass to Gerard Bergen, a 7-yard run by John Williams. Dennis Graham added a third touchdown pass in the third quarter, this one to Kendrick Parrott. Graham was 11 of 13 of the night for 171 yards. John Williams rushed for 137 yards. Permian was 2-1 after the 26-14 win, getting ready for district play. Permian opened up District 4 5A play against rival Odessa High, looking to keep their 28-year dominance in that series alive. The Panthers did just that, but the outcome wasn't decided until late in the game. Odessa High took the opening kickoff and moved to the Panther 27-yard line. In fact, the Broncos were in Permian territory three times in the first half. Key plays by the Panther defense kept the Broncos off the scoreboard. But at the same time, the Panthers were kept off the scoreboard. That was until late in the first half, when the Bubba Ruski was unveiled, and I wasn't the only one fooled. Graham. Who has the ball? Panthers do. That's Gerard Bergen. I don't know where the ball went. Bergen cuts inside the 30. He's still on his feet. Inside the 20. And that's the 5. That's a mojo touchdown. Gerard Bergen takes it all the way for 6. And I didn't know where the ball was. Nobody did. 70-yard touchdown rump for Gerard Bergen. Spurred on by the big play near the end of the first half. The Permian defense turned it on in the second half, holding Bronco quarterback Eric Hartman to just 3 of 20 passing for 43 yards and 48 yards rushing. The game wasn't put away until Kendrick Parrott brought down this 43-yard pass for Dennis Graham, and the final 14-0 continued the mojo dominance of Odessa High.
The next week, Permian made it 28 wins in a row against Abilene High, having a much easier time. It was a career day for John Williams. 230 yards on the ground, 13 through the air, three first-half touchdowns. At the half, Permian had a 28-0 lead, racking up 254 yards, finishing with 546. The defense even recorded a score. Sam Brooks, his first career touchdown, a 22-yard return after the ball was stripped away. Permian was 4-1 after this 58-0 win over the Eagles. Week 6 of the season, and another game was over early on. The Panthers hosted the winless Midland High Bulldogs, and thoughts of an upset evaporated after a first-quarter onslaught by Mojo. In the first quarter alone, Permian gained 144 yards. The final total for the Bulldogs was 128 yards. Offensively and defensively, Permian was putting up impressive numbers. The offense topped the 500-yard mark for the second week in a row, 523 to be exact. Also for the second week in a row, the offense racked up 33 first downs, a school record. For the defense, it was their third shutout in a row. 56 nothing in the final, and the Panthers were looking ahead to the Lee Rebels. Permian had the luxury of an extra week to prepare for the Rebels as another exciting chapter was added to the fiercest rivalry in West Texas football. It was the big plays that made the difference for Mojo, like Tyree Ephraim's 78-yard touchdown run in the first quarter to put Permian on top 7-0 after the Shane Wells extra point. Fakes the pitch, instead gives it to Ephraim. Ephraim has a big hole inside the 30 yard, across the 40-yard line. Ephraim is in Rebel territory. He's at the 30. One man flips his heel. He's gone all the way. That's a Mojo touchdown. Ephraim recording his first 100-yard game, 108 yards on seven carries. Lee responded with a 77-yard drive, the final four by Philip Sims. The first point surrendered by the defense in district. Permian responded. 43 yards by John Williams, the final 36 on a Graham to Parrott pass, and Permian had a 14-7 halftime lead. Graham looks to throw, has Kendrick Parrott behind everyone, and that's a mojo touchdown. Des Graham to Kendrick Parrott for six. Permian extended their lead in the third quarter. Another big play, Travis Jensen blocking Kevin Jordan's punt. That set up the score. Bergen, a seven-yard run, and it was 21 to seven. But Lee continued to have unusual success in the air. A 46-yard play set up the Rebels to score with 3.44 left in the third quarter on a fourth and 11th from the Permian 14. The victory was not assured until Gerard Bergen picked off a Courtney Turner pass with 1.41 to go in the game. Permian not only beat the Rebels 21-14, but they stopped Lee's run of nine straight years in the playoffs. Mojo was 6-1, wrapping up a playoff berth. Permian versus Abilene Cooper. Many points of this game on October 30th as the one that really turned this Panther team around at a run for another district championship. It was arguably one of the most exciting Permian games ever. The game featured two great comebacks and a last second drive for victory that fell short. Early in this game, it looked like a Cougar round. After one quarter of play, it was Cooper 17, Permian nothing, with a Permian home winning streak in district games dating back to 1988 appearing in jeopardy. But the Panthers responded to the challenge. A John Williams one-yard plunge, a Shane Wells extra point, and at the half, Permian trailed 17 to 7. Alan Strambler from five yards out, and Shane Wells nailing a 45-yard field goal completed the comeback. We were tied with just over two minutes to go in the third. John Williams gave Mojo the lead late in the third quarter on a sparkling 46-yard run. John's second touchdown of the game, he gained 190 yards in all. When Tyree Ephraim scored from 49 yards out with 4.48 to go, it looked like at 31 to 17, Permian had survived the scare, but the scare was just beginning. With 1.18 to go, Tony Tate put the Cougars within a touchdown, a successful onside kick, and Cooper was going for the win. With 14 seconds to go, they had their chance. A 21-yard pass to Zach Allen, and the Cougars were within a point. Cooper wanted a win, but the Panther defense wanted it more. The try for two was stuffed, and Mojo prevailed 31-30.
The following week, there was no letdown against San Angelo Central as the Panthers secured the district championship. Five touchdowns on the night by John Williams, 217 yards on the night. The five touchdowns tied a school record set by Chris Homer in 1989. Kendrick Harris, six catches for 122 yards and one touchdown. For the second week in a row, Hermian had to come from behind, but this time it was only 6-0. And you could feel the momentum on this team starting to build just in time for the playoffs. The second season started with Permian recording its most lopsided playoff win ever. Amarillo Paladuro was the competition, or at least they were the opponent. Permian wins 61-0. seemed to be Permian's lucky playoff number. The next week against El Paso Eastwood, it was a 61-8 final. Despite those 61 points, this was really a game that belonged to the defense. Eastwood quarterback Silas Garcia, who came in with impressive stats, the second leading passer in the state, was silenced by Sam Brooks, Michael Comer, and company.
The Louisville Farmers were thought to be Permian's first big test in the playoffs. Not another shutout. Another workmanlike performance. Another win. 28 to nothing. <laughs> It's hard to put into words what happened on December 5th, 1992. It seemed like a cruel trick of Mother Nature to spread ice and snow atop the frozen astroturf at Jones Stadium in Lubbock. While the whiteout, coupled with the Amarillo Sandys, ended the season for the Permian Panthers, this team did not walk off the field without leaving their mark in Permian history. It was a good year, you know, I made a bunch of friends on this team that, that you know, they'll last a lifetime and one game's not going to bring us down too bad. We didn't get to accomplish what we wanted to in the end, but, you know, we had fun trying to and that's all we can do. I'm happy to be a Perm play for Perm, I mean, I would rather, I wouldn't rather play for anybody in the entire world. Um, I've been watching them since I was a little kid, you know, I had my brother come up here and played five years ago and it meant a lot to put on the black and white and I'm glad I got a chance to do that. Yeah, I'm gonna miss it, you know. Once you start playing football, you know, you get used to all the players and stuff, so, you know, you'll miss that, you know. So, I'm gonna miss it. You know, they had a great year. They were very fine bunch of young men to be around. They were very dedicated. Uh, we had some excellent senior leadership and, you know, just very proud of this whole football team.
Remember when we.